You're watching CBS 8 Mornings at 6. We did get some showers overnight. Video taken before 2.30 this morning in the Mira Mesa area. And you can see it's coming down at a pretty good clip here. And the snow, take a look at my uh, Mountain Laguna camera. And this morning, sorry, I apologize. Yesterday we saw many people had to higher elevations to see that snow. There's that video. Isn't it beautiful? Wow, oh, such a there. winter wonderland. Yeah, a lot of snow piling up, enough to make these uh, snowball fights, but in shorts, as <laughs> yes, you saw. Yes, that's so San Diegan, right? <laughs> and to go sledding. Thank you for joining us here. Time now is 6.01. I'm Netta Iranpour. Hi, I'm Eric Connor. Let's check in with Evan Ronnie for a look at our forecast. So uh, I noticed it was shorts, but with a hoodie. Yeah, so yeah. You, yeah. you well, got to stay a little warm up top. <laughs> that's the kind of video I always want to show people who are like, well, isn't San Diego always 70 and sunny because of course that's not San Diego itself but San Diego County yes. we get some snow out there mm -hmm. uh, above 3,000 feet was that cutoff for snow still encountering a few flurries this morning we even have a winter storm warning that remains through 10 a.m. for another four hours sunrise is in 45 minutes and take a look almost all of the showers that we woke up to about a couple hours ago well they have cleared out and we are moving towards sunshine so coming up we'll be talking about how long this stretch of dry weather could be on the way we'll talk Talk about the winds that are dying down, the warming temperatures, all in just a few minutes. Thank you, Evan. And yes, because of that snow, the icy roads, it's cold up there. East County schools, some of them in the mountains have a late start date today. So that includes these right here. You see the schools in Julian, the Mountain Empire Unified School District, Spencer Valley and Warner Unified. And this morning, nearly a thousand flights across the country are canceled. All this because of bad weather, a snow ice storm expected through Texas and Oklahoma. A lot of flights affected are in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Southwest has the most cancellations. They have a hub there at DFW. We just checked there are a handful of delays and cancellations for departures leaving here out of San Diego International. New this morning, an 18 year old is under arrest in connection to a homicide in Chula Vista. The victim was stabbed to death at Otay Valley Regional Park on Sunday. He's been identified as 49 year old Jose Gonzalez. The suspect, Milton Tex Suzun, was already in jail on unrelated vandalism charges when police connected him to the murder. He is scheduled to appear in court tomorrow. New developments here this morning. More charges could be announced in connection to the police beating and eventual death of Tyree Nichols in Memphis. Yesterday, the police department announced two more officers were relieved of duty. One of them was Preston Hemphill. His body cam footage shows him tasing Nichols. The Memphis Fire Department also says three of its employees have been fired. Today, the Chula Vista City Council will be meeting in a special session. Deliberation will continue on 10 candidates, all hoping to fill the vacant District 3 seat. CBS 8's Dana Marie McNichol live outside the Chula Vista City Hall here with what could happen if a decision is not reached here today. Dana Marie. Well, good morning, Eric. We know that after hours of del del deliberation, excuse me, last week, they weren't able to come to a decision for the appointment. So if they can't, a special election will be held on February 3rd. Now, we spoke to those public members attending this discussion. They say they're actually pushing for that special election rather than an appointment. You've decided that you're just going to pick who you think is the right person in a district you don't even live in. How could you possibly know the candidates? The community has not had the opportunity to vet the applicants. Now, District 3 is the largest district that covers the city's southeast region like Paseo Ranchero and Otay Ranch. Locals say the district is in need of better infrastructure and public safety, but worry their concerns won't be prioritized. They also fear the person who could be appointed won't represent the district's community, who is mainly Filipino and Latino. Now, the vacancy is a result of November 8th, 2022 election, when District 3 Council Member Stephen Padilla was elected to the state Senate. Now, among the 10 candidates is Devana Almargo, the Director of Communications for County Supervisor Nora Vargas. There's also Griselda Delgado, the Director of State and Federal Programs for the Sweetwater Union High School District. She wants to work with the city to offer more affordable housing and address landfill issues. We also have Nima Mika Akana, a Filipino American who is a real estate agent and a board member for the Cultural Center. She's hoping to bring more representation to the region and include the Filipino community in more city programs. Other candidates include David Diaz, Guillen Gio, Alonzo Gonzalez, Victor Lopez, Daniel Rice Vasquez, Sofia Rodriguez, and Tanya Williams. Again, if the city council
Council is unable to make an appointment by February 3rd, a special election will be held to fill the seat. Of course, we've been following this from the very beginning, bringing you the latest. If you'd like to read more on this, head to CBS8.com. But for right now, I'm Dana Marie McNichol, live in Chula Vista. Eric Canetta. Dana Marie, thank you. This morning, people living in a condo complex in Tierra San are scrambling to find it. Insurance, wildfire insurance after farmers insurance just canceled their policy. A town hall meeting on this being held today. CBS 8's Chris Grow working for you now to get answers. Joining us live outside the Villa Monterey Clubhouse where this meeting will be held. Quite a shock for a lot of these people, right? Yeah, I got to imagine because this all could end up costing these condo owners a lot more per month after this insurance policy does indeed finalize and get dropped. Now, in less than 12 hours time, we're actually going to be seeing a lot of the residents here within Via Monterey meeting potentially again with the board members and the property management group to talk about exactly what is next. So a lot of them want to know where do we go from here? So let's back up and kind of explain the process. Everyone here is on the same insurance policy with farmers as more than 300 units because the condos in the neighborhood are connected or share walls. The owners pay a condominium owners insurance fee or similar to an HOA fee. It's called a COA fee. It's about $380 a month and it includes property insurance for the entire complex. But according to COA records, the concern by farmers seems to be the future or to be the ever present uh, possibility of future wildfires. Now a replacement policy could cost an additional $7,000 per year for each condo owner. The farmer's insurance policy that got canceled covered up to $127 million in damages. It costs about $130,000 per year. But the replacement policy that's being considered only covers $47 million in damages and it costs more than $2.2 million per year. So it's more money for less coverage. Farmers Insurance, the COA board members and the Via Monterey property management company did not respond to CBS 8's request for comment, but we did speak with some of those that live in the neighborhood. They're fearful that if there's another event like what happened in Scripps Ranch in 03 and 07, where entire neighborhoods are lost, that uh, that it would be a financial hardship on the insurance company. And we also reached out to the California Department of Insurance, but we did not hear back. We did not get a comment from them as well, too. You can go to our website, CBS8.com. Click on that story link for more information on the story. Eric Canetta. And don't forget, here at CBS8, we are working for you. If there's an issue you'd like us to look into, email working for you at CBS8.com. All right, 608 here. Evan, ooh, look at that ooh, snow. Fresh Coming snow there, too. right? Uh, out of Mount Laguna, things stayed pretty light. They only got a couple inches. We're still waiting to see if they can let us know uh, how much they got in total, but Palomar reported six inches of snow that came down. So uh, this fell within what we expected. Some models pushed Mount Laguna to higher accumulation, so we're going to uh, just kind of wait and see, especially around sunrise, which is in about 35 minutes or so, uh, what those totals look like over the mountaintops. But they all got snow. Uh, pretty much above 3,500 feet or so looked pretty impressive. Next 12 hours shows that the sunshine is prevailing. I mean, wow, what a quick turnaround we've seen where those offshore winds have now pushed those clouds away from the coastline. We've seen those showers sink down to the south and to the west, and now we are dealing with a lot of sunshine expected in the forecast once the sun does come up. Again, that is going to be in the next half hour, 45 minutes or so. Temperatures are still in the 40s right now, warming their way to the 50s by 10 a.m., upper 50s and even low 60s between about noon and 2 p.m., and then we'll start to see those temperatures sink again. We have now entered a dry stretch of weather that will last all the way through your weekend. It looks like we will have clouds building at times, so a couple of the days ahead for about Thursday, Friday, we could have partial cloud cover, but we're still expecting drier conditions coming on the heels of these pretty decent totals. Now, in total, we saw between half an inch and three quarters of an inch for many of our inland valleys. Closer to the coastline, we saw lighter accumulations for areas like Miramar and San Diego, about a third of an inch. Uh, but for Valley Center, nearly six tenths. Escondido, more than three quarters. Ramona, more than half an inch. And then for Mount Laguna, we've gotten we know an inch at least and then Palomar Mountain 5.5 inches. Pretty impressive numbers. Forecast for the day again takes us to the 60s. Temperatures will be a few degrees warmer than yesterday with more sunshine on hand. Of course, we don't have nearly as much uh, cloud cover or the shower activity that we saw yesterday and it looks like walking out the door right now. We are still cold because those clouds have left us. So in turn, Escondido is sinking down to the 30s to walk out the door right now. 39, 38 in Ramona, 30 degrees in Julian and then along the greater coastline 
and we're mostly in the 40s. On the five day forecast, we are building from here. So each day moving forward, we've got more sunshine on hand and warmer temperatures eventually getting back to average by the time we get to the weekend. Let's talk, take a look at uh, traffic and uh, how we're starting off our morning. Want to give a mention to a couple things going on out there on the roads. First thing that we will take you to is the five and the 805 where you can see we're already encountering just a bit of uh, volume on the roads. So both of those have some yellow and orange scattered on there, meaning we're slowing down just a bit. Also want to take you to Quarry Road that's farther off to the east. We've got uh, what is reported as uh, some flooding in Paradise Valley Road to Hamishaw Road. Uh, we right now don't have reports as to whether or not this area is still slightly flooded. This could be kind of carrying on over from yesterday's report. Uh, so I just want to let you know to take some caution out there in areas where there is some ponding uh, in the roadways. And uh, beyond that, looks like volume is still pretty light this morning. So we will keep you up to date as uh, that starts to pick up. Back to you. Yeah, something to watch out for. Thank you, Evan.